Hello, I'm Andrew Gooden. I'm the lead teacher at Purdue Polytechnic High School here in Indianapolis. Just as in The Boy Who Harnessed Wind, we see William identify a problem and solve it for his community. Each day at PPHS, students identify and solve personal, school, community, and even global challenges. Let's hear from them as they share which problems they're solving, what their solutions were, and even challenges they encountered along the way. I'm so pleased to present PPHS students in the William Challenge. I'm Enrique Arazia. I like um, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering. I have always grown up making things like little projects, robots, you know. In this challenge, I was faced with making a automaton, which is moving parts. What I decided to do was make an engine. Here I can crank it, but it takes a bit more torque from me. Pieces of the crankshaft that are going up and down. So see, here you can tell that some of the these pieces right here are focused in the middle of the circles of the camshaft to keep it center, but these ones are all off by uh, an inch and a half that makes it so that when it spins it'll go up and down. After I finished making my engine I decided that the hand crank was normally engines run fast and I didn't like the fact that when you're hand cranking it's moving slowly so I decided that I would uh, make it electric and I with the code, I decided to power it with a pentiometer, and with that, I can control the variable of how fast it goes. I had many struggles with getting the pentiometer to work with the code because I'm not sure what I was doing wrong. I think I was grounding it wrong, and sometimes I would turn it and it would just do some crazy things that it wasn't meant to do. One thing that I always did was I used to take things apart. Like when I was very young, I had a bike. I was like six, six, seven years old. And I took that bike apart. And my parents were like, what the heck? We just bought that bike for you and everything. So next thing, after taking it apart, I looked at how it all worked and I understood it. And I put it all back together. And from there on, I always made things, took them apart, understood how it worked and put them back together look into it and see how it works and try to redesign it make it how you like it and if you don't understand how it's being made you look into it and you dig deeper and just keep trying you see Elon Musk that he's like making electric cars and everything like that and you think oh once I go to college and I go to school I'll learn how to do things like that but I feel like it's not really like that it's like they're getting you up to pace to know what you have to do to get there so if you want to be up there, I'd say you have to engage yourself. You have to look up how to make those things, how to um, how to do the things that they do. You have to apply yourself and really look up online how those things work and uh, kind of do it yourself. And so my name is Kayla Owens. I am a senior at Purdue Polytechnic High School. I plan on going to Purdue University after graduation to major in computer information technology and minor in graphic design to then go on to maybe work at Salesforce or Apple or any IT company to be a social media marketing assistant or IT consultant. The challenge question that I answered was, what prototypes, processes, or procedures can Indianapolis do develop to increase local conservation efforts? So my solution to that problem is water conservation because I noticed that Lately, we need to conserve a lot of our water due to the increase of population. So my solution is called the Watopper, which is a faucet that conserves water and manages how much water you use a day. The Watopper is again, a faucet that conserves water. And basically, you add it to your sink, any sink, whether that's the bathroom or the kitchen sink. And then there's an app that goes with the Watopper uh, faucet. And um, you download that app on your phone, whether that's iPhone or Android, whatever phone you have. 
and that helps you turn on the faucet and allow it to regulate the amount of water that you use a day. During our design process, we actually did a lot of research and the only reason why we came up with water being one of the main problems that we are having is we went downtown and interviewed a lot of random people and they all said that water is a big problem and issue. We have two different prototypes. We innovated our prototype because we realized there were some issues that we had ran into. So um, with the first one, the blue one, it, uh, it not only is a water, um, conserving water, but it also filters your water. That way your uh, water could be purified. So we realized that the water purifier was really big. So the purple one, we made the filter smaller and also at the bottom. And then we also made like the con conserving part of the water on the side. That way it just makes it easier for people to hold. If you fail the first time, keep going because regardless, if you don't fail, you're not going to succeed. And regardless, you're going to have some failures. You're going to have some rough drafts. You're going to have some prototypes that might not work. But the good thing about it is that's why they're called rough drafts and that's why they're called prototypes because it's always room for improvement. Well, my name is Amani Muhammad. I'm 16 years old and I am a senior at Purdue Polytechnic High School. This is my first year at Purdue and I've definitely been enjoying this experience. There is a problem in America with teens and tech addiction. Me and my partner have created a solution to this, which is the app called app activities and play for prizes and this um, basically is a system that a guardian can download on their phone and give their teen these activities and in return for these activities they get points which they then can use those points to get prizes and these activities include things such as exercising art projects cooking with your family things that really engage them in social and physical activities. Uh, how it's impacted my use of technology is I'm definitely more mindful of how long I spend on not only my phone, but my computer. I do have to keep in mind that this is a pandemic, so a lot of things are online, so it's a little tricky to stay <laughs> off of technology, but I'm also using it in a more productive way as well. Um, using it to create more, to reach out to more people, and not just kind of wasting away on social media. There's a lot of problems around us and I think um, we tend to just not really try to solve them. We tend to just deal with it, deal with the problems in a way, kind of move around it or find a way to avoid the problem instead of facing it head on. And I think something I can take with me with that is to not just move around it, you know, really try to find a way to solve this problem, not only for myself, but put like maybe people in the future that might also come across this problem. So advice that I have for young people that are interested in being innovators, take take the risk, take chances, because, you know, sometimes people might you might come across a problem or you might come across something that you want to try to see if you can solve. And sometimes people might be like, oh, it's fine. Or, you know, things just kind of come crashing and it seems like, oh, this is impossible to solve, but you just gotta keep going, take the chance, use personal experiences, find people that are also going through this because they will definitely be your biggest support and um, take the chance, yes. Um, hi, my name is Jeremiah Sweeney and I am a junior at PPHS. I participate in robotics, specifically first robotics competition I also have participated in uh, various things such as Mock Trial and National Honor Society. Um, these are both very enjoyable and would recommend them. So we found uh, through a bit of research that a lot of students were having problems communicating and finding encouragement uh, during this online e-learning environment. I feel like, and I specifically could say that I uh, sometimes was annoyed uh, with sometimes my learning situation. Um, I did have problems. Okay communicating with other students um, and other teachers um, in an online environment. And though I figured out ways to go around that, I think it also is important that we find ways to address those students who aren't trying to find solutions for themselves. How do you create one singular educational progress process that fits absolutely all students? And the answer that we came up with is you don't. You cannot always have one way 
um, to access all students. Not everyone learns the same, and therefore you shouldn't think you can teach everyone the same. Because of that, we found a way to address office hours, um, which is a pretty common school concept that we felt like weren't being effectively used. Um, and instead applied those to individual students who were in need um, by scheduling them into their own meetings and allowing them one-on-one -on -one teacher support um, without necessarily forcing them into a situation um, such as contacting that teacher or asking for help with something that they don't necessarily feel like they need help with and putting them in a better situation. Meet John Panzer. He is a student who's having some academic problems. We found that students need a better way to learn online because current systems are not optimized for student-teacher communication or engagement. After we got to this, we obviously had to find some solutions that analyzed our problem. Some that we put together, um, or brainstormed, I guess you could say, uh, were repurposing of outdoor areas for safe and socially distant education. Uh, for instance, some students, as we talked about um, a little bit earlier, didn't have the proper access they needed to, um, to various online products or internet or you know laptops at home. And because of that, we could create those situations. But we didn't really feel like that uh, they analyzed that um, problem with communication. Uh, there were other ones, such as remote, remote learning, uh, de decentralization of learning, um, with uh, families as kind of these educators instead of teachers. Um, and we also looked into personalized learning um, with high quality resources and teacher directed assignments. For the case of like, creating a prototype, we just wanted to get something out that we could see results on. So first off, what we did is we obviously created an interest form and we collected some information. We also sent some emails to teachers asking um, whether they would be willing to help run these prototyping sessions. We had to find you know, what open times worked out. This right here is a screenshot of one of our first uh, successful meetings. Basically, this worked uh, pretty much exactly as we wanted to. While the meeting was initially uh, set up to be uh, English focused, Due to the teacher's background, it actually adapted to something else entirely. We've taken steps to show that our solution to dynamic meetings uh, can be effective at human humanizing the um, educational process and also pinpointing individuals in need. Thanks, I actually enjoy this. <laughs> My name is Jose Quintana and I am a sophomore. Uh, I like playing soccer. I also like running. I just recently found out I like running. I'm pretty good at it too. I like tamales. Those, they're pretty good too. So the problem is, Quarantine and isolation has taken a toll on people, made them feel, you know, um, disconnected, you know, it, it might have made them uh, have feelings of, of anxiousness and isolation. And the solution that I had proposed was to make a album club and it just be a community built around the love and appreciation for music. I wanted to connect people uh, and uh, I decided to do that through building a community. I, I got in that idea through a, a tweet and it said, what if we had an, a, a book club but for albums? And I was like, yeah, I could do that. You know, I have a chance to do that. The response that I got from people was pretty good. And they, I, I sent them a, a Google form and I asked them how they, if they liked it or anything. They liked it. A coach even went and she liked it as well. Just think of the problem, right? I don't talk it to you innovators, right? Think of the problem, right? or think of the challenge you want to solve, right? And, and just have it in your mind, you know? Have it in your mind at all times. Every time you're doing something, just think about it. And, and have it in the back of your mind, you know, you're doing this activity over here, just think about it. And, and it'll come to you. Uh, these ideas, they'll come to you from whatever you're doing, like around you. Like the idea of, of, of making an album come, I didn't, an album club, I didn't really think of it. It came to me through, through social media. I think we all have fears, right? I feel like, uh, you know, I fear something, you might fear something, and it's it's all it's all deep rooted in ourselves, right? Um, but I feel I feel like, you know, fear isn't good because it it makes us act in ways that we probably shouldn't, and we do because of fear, you know. And what we fear is different in each of us, right? But sometimes when you see somebody's actions, you can see that fear, right? You can see maybe what they fear, right? And I feel like I could, I could probably help people out with that. I'm not really into politi politics, right? I'm not, you know, I want to make these two sides understand each other. And I feel like people think that's, that's not realistic. But something in me, I, I want... 
something in me makes me feel like I, I I can make that. Not not me in general. I feel like people in general can make that reality. To to unite these two sides and and to and to unite and to not not even unite, but just help them understand their viewpoints so that their actions towards each other's are different and more of compassion and understanding of each other rather than of hatred and fear and prejudice. Uh, that's what I want to solve. And that's what I see myself solving in five to 10 years. Aren't PPHS students amazing? We hope that their stories inspired you to become an innovative problem solver, just like William. Thanks for tuning in. 